Hello YouTube friends. I woke up in a sort of organising sort of m mode this morning. It's Saturday. I'm going to make a video for you today. I've got an, uh, an idea about what I'd like to talk about. And um, I've got all my boxes and bits and pieces of fabric. Uh, but first of all, I've got to decide what I want to make. I had a couple of ideas about what I might make. And then I got all the fabric out and all those ideas changed. So I've got um, the tables full of boxes and bits and pieces and scraps of fabric uh, that were just upstairs in the spare room. And so now um, I'm looking at them. I'm actually thinking about the, the project I might do quite differently. But before I talk about that, I'll just move my cup of tea to one side. I wonder if any of you would, are doing the mitre square blanket uh, that we talked about a few weeks ago. I'll be leaving some links, I'm sure, but the link I'll leave straight away is the link to um, when I talked about casting on this mitre square blanket. Because in here, it's got a bigger box since it was a small basket, I think, the last time. But these are all the scraps and bits and pieces of um, fab uh, wool that I have left over from all sorts of other projects. Now, so I cast on my mitered square blanket and I'm knitting them with, I, I don't know why I am. I should be knitting them on knitting needles really because they would be a bit longer, but I'm really, really liking the smoothness of these um, prim. Uh, they're 3.25s that makes any uh, difference. Uh, that works well with the sock yarn and it also works with this stuff, which is is four ply. That's, that's like four ply or fingering weight, let's call it. And then we've even got a little bit of double knitting or sports weight in here. I think that's what it's called. But anyway, there's a lot of different uh, uh, wools in there and I cast on, let me see if I can find it because I've done loads. I really enjoy knitting this in an evening time when uh, I'm just watching a bit of um, TV because you barely, you don't even need to look. I have a stitch marker in the middle stitch there that reminds me when to knit two together on the right side. That's the only instruction you need. And then starting a new square is just picking up uh, along the two sides of the squ squares you've just knitted. So like here, for instance this L shape here, I shall pick up uh, these stitches here, 24 there, 24 there, put a marker in the middle and then just do the decrease. It's so easy. It's uh, Again, uh, I found this pattern on uh, a, w a lovely website called The Knitting Squirrel. Now, since I showed it to, or, or cast it on, I've done loads. And what I'm liking about it is how organically scrappily weird it is because I'm using all the bits of wool that would just end up well in the in a big bag with no destination and when um so if I f feel like it I'm trying to find one where I've done that uh of course I can't there but if I feel if I just feel like switching up the the color I can just cast on just I, I just get another strand of, of, of knitting going. Now it's not um, like all my stuff, it's not a prize winner. It never will win prizes. This sock yarn here and here is a bit thin and some of the other stuff's a bit on the thick side. But do you know something? I don't care. I've got, how many have I got along the bottom? I think I've got 12 or 13. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 11. <laughs> I've got 11 across the bottom and I've done three runs so far. But of course, if I wanted to, I could cast on and make it 12 or 13 or 14. I can make it as wide as I like. That's what I love about this. No sewing up. 
using up all my it's going to be really colorful isn't it and i'm guessing it'll just end up shoved over the back of a sofa uh to be something to snuggle up with when you're watching telly which is where it's all come from now i'm using these double-ended prim here these needles here for which i am not sponsored but because they're short sock needles i was finding and i like but i like using them i was finding that the live stitches were dropping off the end so can you see i've just stuck an elastic band round the end of both needles so that the need the, the, the when they've got 48 stitches on there they're all nicely grouped up so i wonder if you carried on knitting your mitered square um a blanket from the knitting squirrel or from i think you can probably find the pattern for this one in all sorts of places but i liked her uh um whoops a daisy what's going on here live stitches live stitches hello norma now i i use these boxes there's a green one here and a pink one here i use them for a lot of things uh, you know they're, they're useful i got them from ikea i think and because they were pink and green <laughs> they suit my purpose perfectly but i'll tell you who else's purpose they suit perfectly yours don't they so if i've got projects like this one norma thinks oh thanks mum you've made me a lovely bed to sleep in it's so kind oh and look there's another one over there and another one so everywhere is a is a cat potential cat heaven so i'm going to put that over there for now because i really don't want her to sleep in it she's got lovely places to sleep beautiful proggy mat that i made for you the other day which she's using a lot by the way uh, i think cat rita's asleep on it right now so the knitting i'm really enjoying i have it just handy there get it out when i feel like it now i've been bringing all the boxes and baskets and bits and pieces and this is confession time i've just found this one whole beautiful sock and one whole beautiful cast on and one whole beautiful ball of wool I'm not sure how long that's been in there. I'm knitting the sim simple sock pattern that comes with this wool. Uh, I've got a few copies of it and it's it, it's a very, very simple. I can almost do it out of my head now. It's a simple pattern. Uh, but because it's a simple pattern, the heel does and the toe, they do. The heel goes really quickly in these. So un unless you're very good at darning or you weigh like nothing at all, <laughs> then this is this is not a great sock pattern for someone who's heavy on their socks like I am so I think I have a person in mind for, for for giving these two but I have to finish them first don't I so that that little bowl's come down from being shoved in a corner somewhere and will be uh alternate knitting when I'm in the mood for that now another of my green boxes here is full of all the all the things I need to make the hexagons for Agnes's quilt. Now, Agnes's quilt is off the board at the moment. It doesn't mean there's been any progress on it. it what that all that means is I'm working on other things and I needed the space. Agnes's quilt is in two big pieces at the moment and is waiting for me to join those pieces up, which it's stored out of the way of cats but I'm going to be getting on with that one again quite soon so in here then this box is it's full of made hexagons it's full of fabric to make more hexagons and then in here I'm not sure what's in here I have one of my what I call my soft boxes um I think I've done a tutorial on these about a thousand years ago uh so the soft boxes and that's full of I'm not quite sure what really but it sits in there quite nicely so that is not a, a box i want to concern myself with today and neither really is that so they can sit there behaving themselves which is more than you're going to do today isn't it no i've got these boxes here which are full of fabrics so i'm going to have a drink of tea this is red bush tea in a big bucket it's delicious and I'm going to move the camera then so that you can see 
uh, some of the fabrics that I've got here and some of the ideas that I might have. This is all part of the big house clear up. That's what I'm telling myself. <laughs> So uh, I'm going to move the camera angle so that you can see. I'm going to get them out. And I'm going to put them into, well, my plan is to put them into piles of this could be this, this could be that. That's my plan. We'll see how far we get with that plan. What do you think? Yeah, she says, as long as you make a nice box for me to sleep in, I don't mind. <laughs> I move the camera angle. an hour of me sorting out these fabrics <laughs> uh, and um, none of the footage was any good but that's fine because I was just picking up individual pieces and looking at them lovingly and saying I remember that one <laughs> it went on for an awfully long time what I've done in tipping out those boxes doesn't matter that we've lost that bit of film <laughs> start again what I'm doing here now is uh, I've tipped out the, um, there's one more big box, but I've tipped out the second box and I'm sorting them into colour strips, uh, piles of colour. Uh, and then we're going to make a decision about uh, what we're going to do with these. I always say we, I mean me. <laughs> so very quickly now, sparing you all the stories about pieces of fabric that are an inch square. <laughs> I'm going to just finish this little task very quickly so that we can get on and sew something. Now there's this pile to do and then that box as well and I am going to do all of them. So I'm going to say that I'll get back to you once I've finished sorting these different piles. It's going to be easier that way, <laughs> promise you. look this is cotton and steel fabric little tigers in pink now I've got an idea I'm going to put that to one side and make Agnes a pair of summer trousers with those and maybe some pink cows as well so they're going to go off to one side and then this is something that's a big strip of green something or other i'll put that over there so i'm going to carry on though and color organize them there's some more cats i had a pile of cats it's disappeared i'll put the cats with the cats over here this box goes back a long long way so there's a big piece of something that would be the back of um, a cot quilt or something like that if I was ever to make those again. And then, oh, there's another big piece of spotty fabric. And then this one. So I'll keep going with the colours because then we're going to decide what we're going to make, if anything. I'm going to get back to you when I finish doing all of this because I could be a long, long time. This new.
I've got a plan and I've been sorting these fabrics into colours now and what I've done is I've put away the green and the red, pinky red, and also all these neutrals, the black, white, the neutrals, all of those. I've put those all to one side. I don't want to use those. I have plans for the green and the red later on and uh, don't really want to use those. So what I've sorted out instead is all the blues, all the yellows, and I've stuck the oranges in with the yellows because orange isn't really a colour I use that much. Uh, but I think for this, for what I'm about to do now, let me tell you the whole reason why I started doing this, apart from the fact that I wanted to uh, get these colours out. But about six months ago, something like that, I bought my new sewing machine, the Juki, and I've been using it on and off. And just this last month, I've been using it a lot and really, really enjoying it. So I thought I'll do an update on how I'm enjoying using the Juki and use some of these scraps up. So I've just cut this very boring fabric, uh, which is um, it's just dull <laughs> cotton fabric, uh, into eight and a half inch squares. It, I could have got them a bit bigger, but I thought a finished square of eight inches would be about right for what I want to do. So those fabric squares then, I cut all of those. I've, I can make more, but I've got those for now into eight and a half inch squares. And then... I'm going to just do some simple string piecing. Now you can do string piecing, of course, onto paper. A lot of people do. Uh, I know uh, Bonnie Hunter's preferred style is put to paper to do it on, uh, you know, pages of old catalogues and things. So I'm going to use uh, this fabric as the base piece here, aren't I, Norma? Yes, I am. <laughs> there are already a lot of strips of different widths in these uh, scraps of fabric. I'm going to do them diagonally and I'm going to do, I think this is how it's gonna go. I'm going to do all the blues on one side and all the yellows on the other. So the, re the whole reason for doing this is to give the Juki a good old workout. For me, I'm gonna have a lovely afternoon because I'm gonna put my headphones back on and carry on listening to my soundtrack music. I'm going to get set up with uh, my ironing pad, which is right here. bring you along for part of it and I'll show you at the end how many of these I've managed to do. This is a, a really good chain piecing exercise uh, and so we'll see how far I get with this. What do you think? She says as long as there's something soft to lie on I don't mind. Doesn't matter to me. Okay we're gonna get on and do that now then. Take three. <laughs> so I'm in the corner here with my sewing machine it's all set up here I've got my ironing pad here my little iron which is all I need really to uh, smooth out the each of the seams I've got my eight and a half inch squares a little pile of them here put them on my knee and what I've got here and uh, this is a few bits that have ended up in the throat of the machine, but mostly my yellow strips are in this drawer and my blue strips are in the drawer below and they're all different widths so and sizes. So I've got a little piece like this that'll go into one of the uh, shorter runs of uh, fabric. So I think I might be um, preaching to the choir here. I think probably everybody knows how to do string uh, piece strips. I'm doing yellow on one side of the square and blue on the other and I'm not using a, the same central strip which would it, that's a lovely thing to do if you use the same colour or pattern or a solid in the centre strip you can make the finished squares all linked together beautifully but I'm not going to do that this, we're going majorly scrappy here and so the thing to realise when you place the first one so let's get a piece of blue because that's what's going on here and we need so we need to find a piece of blue that's long enough to go from corner to corner and I've made a few of these already and the more I do this the fewer of those there are what's that one like there we are that one's great really nice long blue and here's my square let's move my iron over so you can see what I'm doing 
and I'm going to place the strip of blue so that it extends beyond the square. Everything's here on my table, so it's really easy to work out what I'm doing. Now, as soon as you decide on what your centre strip is and you place that face up, face up, and then get another strip if what you're doing is blues. That one's too short. Uh, that one's way too short, but these will come in later. I may have to go into my drawer, see what I can find. That one's perfect. Now I put the next strip then face down so that they're right sides together. And then picking all three layers up, the backing layer, the face up strip and the face down strip, I'm just going to sew approximately a quarter of an inch from the side. Now I'm chain piecing them with themselves here. So I've got a couple more, put those down there so as not to confuse us. So I have one here with those two strips and then all we do with the little ironing setup that I've got here is I just uh, fold that one open and press that one open. So what I've got now then is two strips of blue on my base block. Now obviously every time you pick another strip up it can be smaller than the one before it. So, but it has to be long enough to extend. Neither of those are any good. So we'll try for, what have we got here? You see that one looks like it might be long enough, but it isn't because there'll be a little bit at the top and the bottom. And I don't want that. So I'm going to choose this one, I think. Even that one's not quite long enough. Let's go into my drawer here where I've got more fabrics to choose from. This one's plenty long enough. Sometimes I save those because they'll be long enough to go down the middle strip. So I might, I might not use that one. It's about this one. Okay, this one's a bit wrinkly, I'll give it an iron. This one's fine. It's a little bit wider than the ones I've used. But if I sit it there, ooh, it's just about right. So I'll pop that under the machine. So let's just sew this one. And then working on two at a time means I can press this one open now. And I'm doing all the blues and then I'll do all the yellows. That one's pressed nicely now. And we're going to find another blue, which is long enough. There we go. There's a, a long enough blue. Face down, just have it sticking up over the top a little. And then the nice thing about this, because I'm not measuring the strips, it doesn't matter if my if my quarter inch isn't exactly right, as long as it anchors it down. Always working on two at a time. iron this one out now. You get the idea. I'm not really thinking too hard about the colour combinations so long as they're all blue <clears throat> and all yellow. This one's a bit shorter now. That's not long enough. Oh no that's not long enough. This is though. There we go that'll fit there. <clears throat> oh, 
I'm not going to concern myself with trimming them off until the very end. Well, that's quite cool. Little dots next to big dots. I quite like that. So all of that side's covered now. So now it's time to do the yellow side. So I thought I would tell you how I'm getting on using this fantastic machine. Now it, it is fantastic. Um, I like it very, very much. There's a couple of things about it that I still haven't got quite got the hang of and but they're all underneath the the table here the needle lifts up with my knee which is fine I like it a lot but because I'm short <laughs> my knee doesn't fall in the place where the lifting thing is and I've got it extended down the the um metal shaft thing as far as it'll go so I can't make that needle lift any lower down, which does mean that it's a little tiny bit uncomfortable to lift the needle. Small thing. One of the things I love about it, and I think this was a comment uh, that someone left for me, which was to do with uh, winding the bobbin. Because when I first uh, started using the machine, there's no way to disengage the needle when you're winding the bobbin and I thought that was a real disadvantage until someone told me that if you put the bobbin on to wind while you're sewing it just miraculously fills itself up while you're sewing and so I do that anytime I have an empty bobbin I put it on to wind and then I pop it up there I've got bobbin thread up there it's absolutely brilliant I love that um, I like it here in this corner I know there's a lot of debate about how I wasn't in natural light because I'm sitting. I've actually closed the curtains this morning because it's far, far too sunny um, for filming. <laughs> I don't usually film myself when I'm sewing, it has to be said. But, um, right, we're on to, oh no, little tiny bit more blue there. Let's see, what do you like? Uh, let's find a little bit. That's a lovely little bit. That will go there. Excellent. So I have a light. I don't know if you can see it. It's uh, There's a cat now. Not the usual cat either. Get down, Sadie. She's just trying to push the camera over. Get down. Please get down. Come on. Get down. <laughs> get down. Good girl. <laughs> She was just about to push the camera over because if you could see how I've got you balanced on a load of boxes. <laughs> Old school. Um, the Juki doesn't come with a light, which I was initially quite cross about because you think, well, a light's so important. I tried a different couple of lights. I bought one of those LEDs that go around here. And it was the worst investment ever. It was a terrible thing. It kept falling off and I didn't like it. I think I, you know, I didn't buy a good enough one. And so I got rid of that pretty quickly. But now I've got this lamp, which I don't think you can, can you even see it? If I turn it off, you can. There now. Brilliant. Such a good light. Uh, I've got it right down, stuck behind the machine so I don't keep tripping over the base of it. works perfectly it's not in the way uh, it casts a great light it's very good yeah what else can I tell you it doesn't do fancy things like you know zigzags or decorative stitches never really use those very much not for this kind of work it whizzes through the work like nobody's business and it would do much thicker stuff as well uh, so at the moment I'm just sewing, well, I'm sewing three layers of cotton together, aren't I? It's hardly a big strain for any machine. Let's get some more yellow. We're a bit low on the yellows now. Let's get a bit more yellow out. So 
I've got this yellow strip. I'll just give it a little press, put a fold in it there. Here we go then, there it all is. So we turn it over and see the, the back of it. And where the pieces are protruding, I'm just going to cut it back down to the size of my eight and a half inch block. has been loads of fun. I've really, really enjoyed it. Uh, you can see the uh, effect that it has. I think that we could try some different layouts uh, and try making a zigzag, you know, all the different ways that you can play around with quilt blocks. As I say, I, I was trying to finish something to show you today, but I don't want to rush it. So I'll carry on working on it through the week and we'll have another look at it when it is finished. But I want to just give you a heads up for something that's happening next week uh, is a shop update. And um, Anna and I and my other daughter-in-law, Rita, have been working really hard on getting these um, bits and pieces together for the shop update. And we're going to do a giveaway. So I'm going to give you details about the giveaway now because over on the website, and there's always a link to the website in the description below, there is a mailing list and if you join the mailing list you will get one only one email a month telling you about the shop updated product uh, which means that you'll know when it is we're posting it in the shop and what it is and all of that so the mailing list is there free to sign up to when you sign up to that just as an aside um you say you want to sign up to it and then you just have to confirm you'll get an email and then you just have to press the subscribe button. You don't have to write an email. Uh, it's not important to get in touch that way. You just have to press the uh, subscribe button or the join button or whatever it is that the mailing list gives you. That'll save uh, you, you a bit of time. Uh, but the giveaway is going to be for everyone on the mailing list because that is the easiest way to do the draw. Uh, so join the mailing list because this time next week I'll be drawing a number. Maybe this time next week. So the dukey has been given a good old run for its money there this morning uh, and yesterday. This has been two days I've, it's taken to sort all these fabrics out, <laughs> get everything sorted and do some filming for that. Uh, yesterday when I was stitching some of these, uh, I had my iPad and I was watching a live stream from Robin at RS Island Crafts and she was making a lovely little bag. Uh, it was great. Uh, and so I had the live stream going. I was stitching. It was really, really good. So um, check out Robin. I'll leave a link in the description below. So that's us finished for this week, Norma and I. Thanks so much for watching. Uh, check out a couple of links i'm going to put a link to the uh the day that i got the dukey when my son uh came and helped me fit that uh with baby agnes and then i'll put a link in the description below to the knitting squirrel and uh don't forget to go over and join the mailing list and we'll do that giveaway next week uh, for the shop product but for now i'm going to carry on and make some more of these i know what i'm going to do with it now uh, and I'll tell you uh, next week when it's finished. I've, I've, I've definitely got an idea about what's going to happen with this. So I'll see you next week and um, take care.